Right, I have had enough, enough of the slander, disrespect, underestimation of Gabriel Jesus that is coming from our fan base, that is coming from pundits and talk sports and every other blithering, blustering, wannabe pretender that talks about football. And don't get me wrong, our fans entitled to any opinion you want, absolutely, but it is boiling my piss. The way that Gabriel Jesus is just completely disregarded by certain fans, by certain pundits, and this constant Arsenal need a 25 goal a season striker to compete. It is not based in logic. It is not based in reality. It is not based in sense. It is just an absolute overreaction to Harry Kane and Erling Haaland. And when you dig into any of the numbers, it doesn't even make sense. It's infuriating seeing it. Don't get me wrong. Of course, if you could bring in a striker that could score 25, 30 goals in a season and provide what Gabriel Jesus provides across the board everywhere else, then you would do it. And if you had the budget to do it. But that player is worth well over 100 million and I don't know who they are. It's so frustrating to see it. First of all, Man City last season scored 89 points and scored 94 goals. Yes, Her Erling Haaland scored a billion goals. Fantastic. But actually, the season before that, they scored four more points, they scored five more goals, and their top scorer was Kevin De Bruyne on 15 goals. 15 goals. If you extrapolate Gabriel Jesus' goals per game last season to any level of playing 35, 36, 38 games in a season, he's scoring 15 or 16 goals. If he'd played the same number of games as Saka, scoring at the rate that he was last season he'd have scored more goals than Saka. He would have been our highest scoring player. So on one hand, he's getting punished for simply being injured for three months of the season. That makes absolutely no sense. If you look at him as a player, yes, he underperformed on his XG last season. That is not a bad thing. That means that he's getting lots of chances. He's getting lots of goal scoring opportunities. He should be scoring more goals. And when he starts being more clinical, he will score those goals. That is a far better position to be in than a striker that has overperformed on their expected goals because that means they don't get in the right positions they don't get involved as many in as many goal scoring opportunities so that makes no sense whatsoever whatsoever either and, and, and the worst thing the worst thing about this is when it's compared to Harry Kane Harry Kane scored 30 goals last season Spurs finished eighth and scored 18 fewer goals than Arsenal is that what you want is that what you want no no this comes from a and genuinely, you try and argue with them, you try and have a debate with them, and I, I can't see where it comes from. It comes from a position of, well, uh, the striker needs to score goals, and Gabriel Jesus only scored 10 goals. 10 goals is bad, so we need a new striker. Vlahovic. No. No. And if Vlahovic came in, and I guarantee this would happen, right? You could bring in Vlahovic, and he might score 25 goals in a season. But the output of the rest of the squad, because of Vlahovic, would drop because he does not offer what Gabriel Jesus offers in the build-up. So yeah, Vlahovic comes in, he scores 25 goals, fantastic. But Saka scores five fewer goals, Martinelli scores five fewer goals, Erdegaard scores five fewer goals. Your, your left-sided eight, whether it's not Xhaka anymore, but whether it's Trossard or whatever, scores fewer goals. And ultimately, you score fewer goals, you earn fewer points than when you had Jesus up top. But those people wouldn't even see it. They'd switch on someone else then. But Kyo Saka would be the problem at that point. It wouldn't possibly be that bringing in Vlahovic had actually caused you to go backwards. Because, well, he's the striker and he scored 25 goals. It's so... It's like bashing your head against a brick wall. And, and that's just on Twitter. But then when you see, you know, ex-professional football players talking about it, they don't seem to understand it either. The top four, the top four of Man City's highest point scoring seasons, the highest goal scorer in any of those seasons was Aguero on 21 goals. You don't need one individual player to score 25, 30 goals in a season. You need the team to function and score lots of goals. Last season, Arsenal had our highest ever goal-scoring season. What more do you want? The reason we didn't win the league last season wasn't because of our strikers. And yes, I do understand the point that we could do with a different profile of striker. I've said that many times on this channel. A big physical striker for certain games where you need an outlet. And, and for me, last year, that was probably only two games. It was City at home and City away, where the big benefit they had of Erling Haaland wasn't 
that Erling Haaland is this clinical robot that scores lots of goals. It was just that he's a big lump. And that benefited them because both teams were exceptionally good in the press. And the big difference was that when we pressed City well, they could go long and retain possession. And we couldn't. And so, yes, a big physical striker. I do understand the need for that. I think this season that's just going to be Kai Havertz. He will be that option when we need it. But that's not the same as we have to have a striker that comes in and scores 25 plus goals. We can't compete otherwise. It just doesn't work like that. In Liverpool's title winning season, they didn't have that with Bobby Firmino, but it still worked. And I just, if I'm Gabriel Jesus, I'd be looking at social media and pundits and all of these other morons thinking, God, you just don't understand football. So there we go. That's that rant over, which I really felt like I needed to get off my chest today. Um, I didn't even intro the video. If you've enjoyed it, please like, subscribe. We're trying to get to 4,500 subscribers before I actually lose the will to live. And uh, yeah, I'll be live at five. Cheers.